Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Plan channel. I'm excited to be here today. I'm doing another budget video today. It's the first of the month. It is a uh, first of the month payday for our family. It is a new budget period. It is September. The year is flying by. Even though it's been the slowest year ever, it's been the weirdest year ever. I mean, it's just crazy. My husband and I were just talking about how weird things have been. So, I'm excited to dive into this. I am in love and love and love with these colors. Purple is my favorite color and I've just, uh, I'm in love with these sheets. So this is my calendar. I sell this and many other budget sheets in my budget store um, or my Etsy store called at Lisa's Faith Budget Plan in my uh, in Etsy. And um, if you are interested in any of these inexpensive sheets that you wanna download and print for yourself and print as many times as you want, then um, head on over to Etsy and to the store, um, my Etsy store, and check out the budget sheets that I have and see what works for you. I have a variety of kind, of many kinds, that you can choose from. You don't have to choose all of them. Or you can get the bundle pack where you get all of them and you just pick and choose what you want. So, yeah, I really love it. It's kept me and saved me so much time and headache from trying to remember how much I have in the bank how much is allocated for spending for what category and how much is available, you know, as a buffer in my checking account. So I just love using these sheets to keep track of what's going on day to day because I get into these every day. And the reason I get into these every day is because they look beautiful. Every month I do something different, so it changes it up. And I try to find something very attractive to look at to share with everybody and something I'm willing to come back and look at. And that's what I love about these. I do use expense stickers from Sarah Marie stickers. Um, some of these, and I was just using up my blue stickers. So that's why that's over there. Um, Sarah Marie stickers. I use her expense stickers and uh, some of her other sheets. That's an hourly sheet. And I just kind of randomly used what she had on there to fit what I wanted to use for my style of budgeting. And um, these are old Sarah Marie stickers. I don't know if she's gonna put any more of these out, but they were tiny script stickers that I just love using. So I've had them for quite a while. I don't think they're in her store, but the rest of these stickers are, and I love them. So enough about the products, enough about what I have here. This is how my bills lay out for the month. So I will be doing paycheck to paycheck budgeting. And then I will also go into um, my uh, transaction logs for the month. And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, and a monthly budget. So this is my monthly overview of when the bills come out. I have a monthly budget that shows you how much for the entire month will come out and how much for the entire month will come in. So deposits and uh, withdrawals. And so I will go over that in just a minute. So, but here's the calendar. And I just go through here and I, once things come into the bank, I just check it off. And that lets me know that I'm on track at a glance. And then if the amount changed any different from this, then what I normally have, I would put it here in my, trend, uh, my uh, September budget sheets. So I use in my shop the expenses, income and expense budget sheet. I use the two page one. I have a one page one. And then I have also a um, variable and fixed income and no, not income. I say that every time, I'm not sure why I do that, but it's variable and fixed expenses, budget sheets, one page and a two page one. So I have to use the two page because there's just not enough room over here and I have a lot coming in and out all over the place. So this is what the beginning of the month looks like. This will change as the actual numbers come through and today's September 1st, so these have come through, done and done. They, we always get a large amount right in the front in the first of the month, then we allow that to carry us over. So with that up front, um, I can see exactly what my income, my husband's income is and what goes in and where it's coming from. If it's money that we already had, like this is part of a savings account, this 119. So it's money we had put aside for, um, from a, for a sinking fund for something that's gonna come out later and it's gonna come out down here. So these kind of cancel each other's out. This is from um, August. This is what I balanced forward to the month of September um, so that I could make sure I had enough in the first half of the month to pay off my cell phone because I knew it was going to be a large number. 
Um, so yeah, I tend to roll over every month. Um, it's my buffer and I roll it over month to month and sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. We'll see how this month goes, but yeah, for right now, we're looking really good. Um, we're down to the 1508.26, that will be our buffer. And more than likely we will spend that because we are wanting to buy um, some specific things for the house and um, we're still talking and negotiating on it and figuring it out. So when we do to make this large purchase that we're deciding on, I'll let you know what it is. But for right now, we're not quite, quite committed to what we're gonna do with this. Um, so yeah, you will see I do not have school loans listed here. We don't have to pay right now. I've paid plenty in advance um, where I actually don't have a balance due. And with the COVID-19, there is no um, payment due at this time until December, after December 31st, at least for my school loans. So, but I do plan to pay them off starting in October, um, which is a unique month in itself. And I'll get into that when we get closer to the October and start explaining the debt payoff there. So now that I've gone over the monthly view of the budget, the actual numbers that I've budgeted. Let's go into what is next, my paycheck one. So this is paycheck one, and I'm really excited about it because in paycheck one, and this is why I said my uh, calendar sticker was wrong. This is part of paycheck two, I need to put it over here, <laughs> but it doesn't matter, it's on the calendar, I just have it represented, it's fine. But paycheck one, I plan to pay off my cell phone and I am super, super excited about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my calculator here and we are going to calculate exactly how much income is here. So I have a balance forward from um, August going into September. That's actually in my checking account. I've already checked the balance. It's sitting there. That's what it is, September 1st. Uh, that's what it ended on August 31st, going into September 1st before the deposits posted. Uh, my husband gets a military retirement check. This is after things are taken out like taxes and medical and vision and dental and other things. So that's uh, what's left. And then he gets VA disability and VA education. I had to combine the two because I didn't have enough lines for everything. So um, between the two of those, we have this total, $3,049.46. And I know $916.50 of that is what is the VA education. The rest of it is the normal VA disability. If you've looked, seen my other videos, it did not go up or anything. It stayed the same. I just added that education to it. And then my son pays us rent. And this is what he always pays us every month. It covers his medical, which is the Humana Health. And then um, the rest of it, we just kind of throw to the rest of the bills and that covers his part of the mortgage, his part of groceries or whatever we want to call it. It doesn't matter. It just kind of gets thrown in the pot and we just claim it for the rest of it. So let's go ahead, turn this on and add all this up. Now I do have dividend here. It hasn't quite come in yet and we have a credit union and we get dividends. So it's only pennies, but I need to allocate for it. So when the actuals hit, I will add that over here and that will make more sense later. But for right now, I don't even know what they're gonna give us. So usually last month, I would think it was six cents or seven cents or something. It's almost not worth it, but I'd rather get six cents of dividends than pay 1% interest. So yeah, there is that. So 14.73.10. And then 30, 49, 46, and 653. So our total income to right here at the top, by my pen, is $5,500. Again, not all of this is income. Some of this is rolled over and some of it's rent well, to cover the cost of my son's expenses and things like that. So 
And then the VA education, it looks like it's going to come every other month. So like in August, we didn't get any, but in September, we're getting it, but October, we won't. So that kind of thing. But I always list it when I do make out my budgets, regardless if it comes in that month, just in case it's one of those weird things and they send us something. I don't know. I'm still learning how all this works. <laughs> so we're going to total this column up, all our expenses coming out for the first three days, which is a lot. Our mortgage for one, 1980.06 plus 100. It's my husband's personal money, 231.75. This is a support for missionaries that we're doing at Greater Europe Missions. Uh, Helping Hands is a support for our church um, where they help uh, people who are in a financial bind, maybe medical or some kind of, um, let's say their car broke down or washer and dryer broke or something and they just need a little helping hand until next paycheck or and I don't think it's money that is like returned back to the church but the church decides who may need a little extra help and if you go if you're in our community and in our church you know you can go to them and say is there something I need help with this and we're just being the hands and feet of Christ I mean that's all it is and I love that I love the church that has a program and I love that it takes care of the people and um, yeah, that's what that's all about. So the next thing I have is 376, which is my husband, my son's insurance. And like I said, we take it out of his rent. So it covers that cost. 799, 599. Those are um, subscriptions. And then I'm going to add this $1,117.39 cell phone lease. Yes. Oh, cell phones are expensive. I got a iPhone 11 Max Pro. And then at first I wasn't going to pay off the leases. That's why I have a lease. And I needed a phone because my other one was, the battery was fading pretty quick on it and it really needed to be replaced. And I'm like, but I don't know if I really want to replace it. I don't know. I just, I decided to get a new one because sometimes keeping the old ones are not worth the headache after a while so but now i'm very happy with my new phone i'm going to sell the old phone and yeah pay this lease off i'm excited to see what that is that is the best feeling ever is when you have a debt and you have the cash to pay off that debt in one lump sum and that's what i'm excited about about september is i'm paying this off and i've already paid three cell phones off and this is my fourth one and I paid the three last in August. So yeah, <laughs> this is just awesome. So I'm going to add, even though this is for the first three days of September, I still budgeted for um, groceries, household, restaurant, miscellaneous, and gasoline. I know I'm not going to use a lot of this. And I may, I may use actually all the groceries. I might buy a big, large sum and buy groceries and maybe even go over if I spend enough. But the rest of these, I won't spend a lot. And whatever's left will just roll over to paycheck two, which will be on the fourth. So, you know, it's going to happen very quickly. So I'm not too worried about that. But let's go ahead and put this in here. Plus 200 plus 130 plus 110 and 30. So these numbers I came up with, normally I would take the entire month of what I budget it, divide it by the number of days, and then count out the days that way and create my budget this way. But this time around, I'm doing something a little bit different that kind of matches and flows with the weekly check-in budget sheet that I have. And I just started doing it last month and I wanted the numbers to be closer. So I decided this month um, to kind of match those numbers. So this is what is going to reflect that. My total for expenses for the first three days of September, <laughs> geez, is $4,489.18. <sighs> wow. That's a lot coming out all at once. <laughs> so I'm going to write my total down here. $4,489.18. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my total income 
and I'm going to subtract my total expenses. That's a comma. 489.18. And that is going to give me my, you can call it a buffer. You can call it um, my balance forward. You can call it my rollover. You can call it whatever you want. This is just the number um, of what is in the bank when the next paycheck comes. This is what I'm budgeting. Seven. There we go. $1,018.87. So that is paycheck one. <laughs> I am blown away by this. I've been budgeting, seriously focused budgeting, I guess, for a little over a year now since I took my Dave Ramsey course, Financial Peace University, in June of 2019. And this is September of 2020. And I'm like, oh my goodness, my life has just changed after just focusing on getting rid of debt and not adding new debt. You know, the world of consumerism teaches us we need debt when we don't need debt and that we can do a lot with cash when you don't have 10 or 20 different tiny and large monthly payments eating away at your paycheck every week. Oh my gosh, you just, money just seems to come out of nowhere sometimes. It's taking us, you know, a little over a year to get to this point, but I'm just, I can't believe how blessed and how amazing God is when we take these principles and really apply them to our life. It's just awesome. So I hope your budgeting is going well. And I hope things like this are happening to you as well, where you focus and the reward is after focusing and paying on your debt and not adding new accounts and closing old accounts that you don't necessarily need, especially high interest ones. If you have high interest rate accounts, you don't need those. No, 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 <laughs> not good. So yeah, just, you know, do what's right for you. And you know, every budget is personal and it's personal to you, but just know there's so much light at the end of the tunnel. There's so much hope and joy that comes with getting out of debt. It just blows my mind since I've been doing it this past year and a half. So just, just hang in there. If you're not there yet, if you're about to be there, you know, praise God. I mean, that's awesome. So after I do my um, paycheck to paycheck sheets, I always set up my transaction logs for my spending categories. And that's what these are. Transaction logs for specific spending categories that I have. Now I also have in my Etsy store, just something that says transaction log, and you can use it for whatever you want. You can do it for something specific, or you can use it as a daily transaction log or a savings transaction log or a sinking fund transaction log. I, and it's sold all by itself or it's sold with a group of these sheets that you're about to see. So when I start my transaction log, I always put the date. So September 1st, I put a zero amount because really nothing happened. <laughs> this is the beginning of the month. And then days that I'm using this budget for and then how much I did. So in the first three days, anytime I spend money, like tomorrow I will be spending, or later today, I'll be spending grocery money. So I'll write September 1st, the amount of the groceries, where I bought it at, and what the new balance is. And I love doing a transaction log. It's almost like a check register. <laughs> when we used to have, you know, something to balance our checkbooks with. And that was something people used to do. I haven't balanced a checkbook in years. I do these budget sheets now, but I hadn't done a check register balance in gosh, about 15, 20 years. Um, I, cause I don't get checks anymore. Nobody uses checks and we don't write it out. And that's how we used to keep track. Now we don't. So I came up with my own transaction log where I can kind of track each category. This is for grocery household for a month. I don't fill the whole thing up, but I get pretty close and um, I, I try to only stay within $1,000 every month um, is what my monthly allotment is. But I break that $1,000 from paycheck to paycheck or week to week in order to um, 
use what actual money I have in my account. And that's the key, having your actual money balanced and have your actual money budgeted that you got in the deposits. So you know not to go over too much. Same thing with restaurant. Though most of these I probably won't go over and I'll just roll it over to the next pay period on the 4th and then that'll carry me over to the 17th. And then I do miscellaneous, that's anything that's not groceries or restaurants or gasoline. So it's like um, Amazon purchases, that is, um, what else? If I want to buy clothes or shoes or just odds and end things that really don't fit a category, but it's something you purchase, so you just kind of put it there. So I give myself a large budget for that, um, but I have one place to put it in. And it works for me. I like it. It really does work. And then I have a sheet for monthly notes, so I can just take notes on what I want to do. remember for going into October. So there is that. And those are the budget sheets that I started for this month. And this is how I will be taking care of my budget, which I'm really excited about um, because not only am I paying off my cell phone this month, but later this month, we're deciding on purchasing some um, home workout equipment or like um, what we're looking into is getting a total gym and um, we can use it for physical therapy for our, t our two sons. Both have autism, but they're pretty high functioning, but they're, one of them has low muscle tone. So we want to build up that muscle tone some more. And we haven't really been out doing things as much. So, and it's so hot here in Virginia <laughs> over the summer. So I figured long-term, this would be a great thing to have. If we're not outside, we can do this inside and getting them motivated is hard. My husband wants to use it instead of going to the gym um, on base or something like that. Cause he is retired and he can go on base to the gym, um, he wants something here at home. So he's gonna use it. I'm gonna try to get into using it. And we're really excited about it. So we're gonna buy one of those and we're gonna pay cash for it. So we're super, super excited about that. So that is where I'm at right now. So I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, um, please subscribe to my channel. And I will be back in a few days to go over a few other things. I have, uh, weekly check-in and the calendar for the weekly check-in. And then I have my sinking funds and my debt tracker that I'm going to go over. So that'll be the next budget video. So um, I will see you guys next time. Have an amazing and blessed day. Bye.